to RB&D Reviews. I'm Rob. And I'm Dave. And today we're going to be reviewing the classic political satire duck soup from the comedy team The Marx Brothers, Groucho, Chico, Harpo, Seth. <laughs> where my mom uh, was a Marx Brothers fan and my dad mm -hmm. was a Three Stooges fan, so I, I was looking at both of these classic comedy teams growing up and I really enjoying their films. Yeah, I've al I've always been a Marx Brothers fan ever since I I seen this film. This was like one of the first films I saw mm -hmm. from them because I think actually you let me borrow it at one time, mm -hmm. and then they used to play them on TV like real late at night, sometimes like on Sundays or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I used to if I was lucky enough to be able to stay up to watch in my wood. Yeah, so. and plus the difference is, uh, I mean, it's probably unfair to compare the, uh, those two comedy teams, but the Marx Brothers tended to do more, shall we say, surreal and perhaps smarter comedy than the Three Stooges, which did sort of like lowbrow slapstick. But yeah. they also How about taking up the tax? How about taking up the carpet? I still insist we must take up the tax. He's right, you've got to take up the tax before you can take up the carpet. Oh, it's kind of like... Uh, shall we say, like an idiot politician, which I'm sure a lot of people could see a relevancy with. And like I said, even though we're not in a depression at the moment, you know, we are facing some pl uh, problems with our economy, just like yeah. in this movie. So it's still relevant today, even though this was about the Great Depression and not about a recession, but it's still right. really relevant. It's in a fictional fantasy um, place, and it's got a good mix of, you know, gags and, you know, jokes about the government and policies without naming any names. That's why I think it's people still watch this movie today, even though it was made in 1933. They, yeah. It's set in a fictional land, but yet, you know, you, there's still some jabs at the politicians and government and um, the depression and all this, and it's still relevant no matter no matter what. Yeah. No matter what generation you are. Well, actually, I found out he got in a little. Groucho Marx got in a little bit of trouble for doing this. As a matter of fact, because I don't know if it was uh, Fredonia or Pic Pictoria, one of the countries actually exists, and they called him up and they complained to him that he was like making them look bad or whatever, <laughs> and and they told him to like you either change the name and find like more fictional names for your countries in this movie or forget it. And he just he basically went off on them and told them, no, I'm not I'm not changing anything. You you can go f yourselves, you know. <laughs> So yeah, it just it, they finally just like let they him alone. let him al left him alone and just let him uh, go ahead and do it. They never took him to court or anything on it. But yeah, yeah I thought that was interesting. Yeah, actually, there's a I believe it's Fredonia, New York. It's actually a town and not a country. But yeah, they weren't really happy about that too. I mean, this movie's this movie is interesting because this was the last movie they made at Paramount and their early Paramount films, the Marx Brothers. Aren't real, they make fun of anything in sight. When they left and went to MGM, they usually made fun of only the villains. They were more of a people you could root for. So this is like the beginning yeah. of the end. This movie and their next movie, Night at the Opera, fans debate about which one is the best film they ever made. And it's because, you know, they're different. They were both made on the brink of when they went through, you know, a change. And with, right. and with Duck Soup, I like the, the good gags. Harpo puts in some really good gags. Um, find out of something? You know, find out of something? You spy on them? You know, spy on them? At some matter, all the time I talk, you know, say nothing. At some matter, you know, speak. I said, let's stop it. Um, there's a, the famous mirror scene where they break a mirror and they try to prevent Groucho from knowing it by dressing up like him. There's been right. some good jokes about um, the involving a lemon vendor. I mean, this has got some really good classy material and they do it very well. And there's yeah. a very funny a hat exchange movie that was borrowed from Laurel and Hardy, another comedy team, because the right. director of this movie, Leo McCary, he directed a lot of early Laurel and Hardy scenes, and they do a hat exchange routine where they exchange the wrong hat, and they do that with Edgar Kennedy in this movie, who they annoy yeah. quite a bit. So this movie's got some really good good stuff, like I said. Yeah, especially the one with the mirror one, where it's like two of them and everything, and he's, they got to like copy off each other. I mean, that was like, a lot of people have like, redone that like I remember on Sesame Street years ago uh, some some people had like redone that and they just like recently maybe a few years ago they they did a uh, like a parody skit to that like on Family Guy a few times and Charlie Chaplin did Charlie that in, Chaplin in a 1917 yeah. silent yeah so this is a pretty 
good movie. Um, the prob I mean, there's a rumor that this movie flopped when it first came out. Not quite. I mean, from what I read, it didn't make as much money as their previous films like The Coconuts or Animal Crackers or Horse Feathers and all that. But, I mean, it was still... It did do some good business at the box office. And, of course, when they went to MGM, they movies, their first two movies did even better because they changed the formula a bit. But personally, I like them when they're running around crazy. And another thing I like about Duck Soup, mm -hmm. there's no romantic um, couple subplot like you see in a lot of Marx Brothers movies. Right. I oftentimes have to fast forward through to get back to the Marx Brothers. Yeah. Because the early MGM films like uh, Night at the Opera, and even some early Paramount films like Animal Crackers and Coconuts, they have a romantic lead subplot. And sometimes they sing these sappy songs that I just, on my, on my DVD player, I just yeah. fast forward through them because I don't have to deal with Not them. that I care, but where is your husband? Why, he's dead. I'll bet he's just using that as an excuse. I was with him till the very end. <laughs> no wonder he passed away. I held him in my arms and kissed him. Oh, I see. Then it was my It's house. got some amazing sets in it, too. Mm. The sets are, like, probably the best out of, like, all their movies. I'd say the only, the only other one was probably maybe, like, Animal Crackers had had some good sets in it, but mm. yeah, the the sets in this are like the most memorable. Mm. I mean, like in the uh, in the meeting hall scenes and whatnot when he's coming in, and you got all those guards and whatnot, and just the the, the big mansion, the plantation house later on in the film and whatnot. Those were all like real memorable sets. Mm -hmm, definitely, and I think some of the MGM ones, the sets are a little bit better, but these ones are definitely more of an effort was put into them than, let's say, the other movies. And another good thing about Duck Soup is the earlier Marx Brother movies are rather stagey, and the static camera movements here, they're, they're a lot more florid camera moves, and stuff. Yeah. it's not as staticky, and there's not long takes like in the early films where everything's done in a real long take. It's cut up, and it works. Yeah, so. although sometimes it feels like it was like, it was all done in one take because it, it it moves like real smoothly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it don't you. Could, it's hard to tell like where they where they cut a scene and like started another one because it, it everything just fits together. It, it fits together perfectly. And it's seventy minutes, so if you're new to the Marx Brothers and you don't want to sit through a ninety minute Marx Brothers movie, this is seventy minutes. You can just yeah. pop it in there and then bam, you you got an hour, your ten minutes of your time, and you can go from there. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, so I definitely, if you have, if somebody has never seen a Marx Brothers movie, perhaps start with this one and perhaps Night at the Opera, but this one, I think it moves faster, it's got more memorable routines, although Night at the Opera does have its own memorable routines as well, yeah. and if they like, the, if they dig the Marx Brothers, then they, they can go check out their other movies. <laughs>